Now, I'm so excited to introduce to you my friend, Ingalil. And she has traveled all the way from California, and she's such a delight. Um, she's real, she's transparent, she tells you what's up, and I love that about her. And she loves her husband with all of her heart and her children, and she has traveled the world, been um, in so many amazing places to get to serve the Lord. And the thing that I just love about her is that she just has the, the sweetest servant's heart. Um, she just is so easy to be with. And, you know, how many of you have friends like that where instantly whenever you meet somebody, you're just like, I feel at home with you. Does anybody have friends like that? Good, because everybody should have friends like that. And if you don't, then pray the Lord will bring someone like that into your life. I love the way that you just touched her knee. That was so great. Us girls were like, yes, you're my friend. <laughs> and so would you please help me by welcoming my friend Ingalil Guzik? Oh, this is so exciting. I've been waiting, anticipating this. I'm going to take a picture of you so that I remember you. Okay, here we go. Ladies over here, smile real big. Ladies here, oh, the light's shining like the, it's raining. Okay, there. Then I'm going to focus in on you the rest of the week and pray for you because we are going to be on a journey together this weekend. All right, so I'm already rambling. I know. It's like I'm excited. So, okay, so in my room is this gift basket. Whoever put that gift basket together knew exactly what I like. I like salty. I like caramel. I like nuts and water and mints and gum. It was like, who told them this? It was amazing. But the funniest thing, I was so tickled because on the card that, that was welcoming me, me, it says at the top, it says, let me see so I remember it. It says ski. Um, then after that, it says ride. And then it says hike, eat, and rock climb. And I'm thinking, I'm, on, I'm only here for 24 hours. <laughs> but I, I decided I can ride to church and I can eat here. And I can, what was the third? I can hike to my room if I don't take the elevator. And then I can um, tonight climb the rock, which is Jesus. And we can go into the word of God and discover him together. So four out of five isn't too bad that we're going to be able to accomplish here tonight and this weekend. I think I have a friend that came from a long way. She might just be coming tomorrow. Jenny Tree Rice, are you here? Yay, she came. We go way back before she was married in Simi Valley days. So good to see you. Yay. That's so fun when you have friends all over the world. I, I don't have friends all over the world, but in different parts of the world. And um, when we get to see each other like this, what a powerful testimony, Debbie. Where are you? Amazing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for giving of your heart to us. Thank you for making it real and letting us see the, not only the struggle that you went through, but where you are right now, because that's where it's at. And my husband, a couple years ago, out of the blue, decided that he was going to donate a kidney and blessed a young, well, in their 30s, um, a woman he didn't know um, in New York. And when we were there, he got to meet her. And it was so powerful to meet somebody who received his kidney. It's like, she's walking around with my husband's kidney in her. And it's like, this is just really surreal. But God was so good. And we got to share the testimony of why he did it and what he was going to do. I think that's why we get two kidneys. Because we can survive without one. Is that amazing? Am I beeping? Or is it something else? Okay. All right. Somebody's beeping. Somebody's being summoned. So if your phones are on, you might want to turn it on vibrate or you might want to put it on a little buzz because unfortunately what always happens is it'll go off at the wrong time and then you're embarrassed and we don't want that because we just want to be all happy and calm tonight because I have some things that God has given me. But first, Tammy, thank you 
for letting me be part of this as you grand reopen women's ministry, the opportunity to pour into you what he has given me first and had to live it and experience it because I can't come up here and be fake because you, you, you can find out who fake is, right? You can spot fake in women all over. No, she's not real. No, she's not real. Okay, she's real. So I got to be real with you up here and I'm going to be occasionally a little tough because this is like, this is like pioneer women country. You, you ladies must be tough up here. You must, I mean, to, it takes nothing to live down by the beach and just lounge around, but this is like where it happens. This is like real life. This is like, mm, you know, we can do life. We are strong women. And so um, you don't mind if I get a little tough with you, right? That's okay. So I was hoping to come up to some cool weather. So I wore like long sleeve and furry like teddy bear clothes. So I might be sweating, but um, that's okay. We've had such a warm summer in California. And I'm not actually from California. I was born and raised in Sweden. And so that's my home. That's where my parents live. That's where I visit. Not vacation. I visit to visit family. But um, I'm, I've got that Scandinavian DNA stubborn, you know, I don't submit, you know, all the kind of things, you know, I can do it all and, you know, hear me roar and all that. So God has did it, knocked me down, softened my heart, made me pliable, taken that lump of clay and just poured himself over me and put his hands on me and put his fingerprints all over me. So I have the privilege of sharing with you twice this weekend. And as we approach God's word, I, want to, I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about you. I want to talk about you and your relationship with God. And I want to talk about the word of God and what it is intended to do in your life. And through these passages, you chose an amazing passage of scripture for this theme. But I'm going to start out with a verse because this is how I've been praying for you as I knew I was coming here. It's from Isaiah 55. It says this, the rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They come, they cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with the word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I, God, wants it to do and it will prosper everywhere I send it. So that's been my prayer for you, that you would hear God's word, you would take it in, you would let it change you, and it would prosper you wherever you go and bear fruit wherever you go. So are you ready for a little bit of snow, a little bit of rain on your heart and your mind? Because that's what we got to do. We got to come before his word ready to receive. So let's pray about that right now. Lord, it is with great anticipation of you that we are here. We are not here because of any man or person or any um, coercing. We're here because you made a divine appointment with us to be here so that we would hear from you, we would learn from you, we would understand what your Holy Spirit wants to speak into our lives right now in this season of our lives. So God, would you be faithful to your word like you always are? Would you accomplish in each woman here today and tomorrow, what you intend to do, what you set your heart on doing in her life. And Lord, would you use me as your vessel? Would you spend me for your glory tonight? Lord, would you let these women be blessed through the uh, encouragement that I can give them? And would you challenge them and change them for your glory's sake? In Jesus' name, amen. So this theme verse, let me just read it again because we are going to be marinating in it. Do you know what happens when you put meat in marinate? It gets soft, it gets juicy, it gets tender, it gets flavorful, and it tastes great. So that's what we were going to do this week. We're going to marinate in this verse. We're going to know it backwards, forward, inside out. And when you leave here, you will be saturated with it. My soul wait silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. 
You picked a theme verse that is going to challenge. This is gutsy. This is gutsy to, to, to take something that is not just all sweet and, you know, let's all, you know, dance, you know, run through the fields, you know, and be happy. No, let's get down and examine our hearts and see what God wants to do in it. So that's gutsy. Tammy is a gutsy gal. And we need this in every way because we get very easily into this comfort zone that we just kind of, let's just get into this stride and let's not do anything that's challenging, you know, let's just kind of flow. And we need to be up against each other. And as iron sharpens iron, we need to sharpen one another because times are getting tough and rough. And if we, within the walls of the church, can't be real, we're not going to be real out there. We need each other to hold us to that standard. So I just need um, an agreement from you. Um, if I do my part, um, I need you to agree that you will do your part, that you will take the word of God and you apply it to your situation Whatever that might be, your story, like Tammy said, is important. And wherever you are at in your journey and in your story, you need to apply this. I can't apply it to you. I can't point out the parts where you need to let the Holy Spirit move in you. But you know where it is. So I'm going to do my part and nod your head if you agree that you're going to do your part. Okay. All right. Good. I'm holding you to that. The conclusion of tonight's message is going to be this. I'm giving you the ending first. Just in case you needed a nap tonight, <laughs> you know where we ended up. So you can talk about it later. You're, we're going to end up with, he is my rock solid defense at all times. He is my rock solid defense at all times. In this psalm, before we even get to verse five and six, the psalmist has already mentioned his position and of his soul waiting upon God, of trusting in him for salvation, the acknowledgement that God only was his rock, his defense, and that because of believing and relying on God for all, that he would not be moved. So then we get to these two verses and he brings us back to that very foundational, extremely important thought that God is our rock. He alone is our rock. And I think when we read a verse like that, let's, let's think about the, the reasons maybe behind him coming to this point. Let's look at what, what kind of position or place would you need to be in in order to exclaim these verses. I think that's where we find ourselves. So listen, this is what I realized, is that behind these words is that there would be a calm and a quietness in his inner life. And in the soul of his life, that seat of our will and our emotions and desires, and that he would choose to take time to be still and wait upon God. The third thing is that in the midst of all, that there would be an assurance of justice and stability to draw from in unstable situations. Now, that, that describes me. I mean, he might as well have been describing what I desire and what I want. And when I desire this and I want this, this is the conclusion of what I come to. This is where I end up saying these very things about God. And how great it is, how great it is, ladies, that we can look at verses like that and have them point out a deficit in our life. No, I, I'm not there. I don't think I can say that. I don't think that's really me right now. Well, that's why you're here because you get to let the Holy Spirit examine your heart. He takes like this floodlight and he shines it on your heart and he exposes it, not for shame, not for guilt, but sometimes we need a reality check from the neck down, you know, in our heart to see what is going on. The Psalms are amazing this way because when you lose yourself in your own limited ability to express yourself and how you feel, you go to the Psalms because they completely express how you feel, but you wouldn't be saying it that way. 
but you find yourself in the Psalms when you need to figure out what's going on with your emotions. So there's a wonderful correlation to this Psalm and the New Testament, and it's in Colossians, and let me read that for you. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight, if indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. So I want to focus tonight. Let's focus tonight on one aspect of our theme verse, and that is the rock. He only is my rock. This was not the first time that David wrote this in the Psalms. He actually wrote it about 20 more times, that he refers to, Jesus, it refers to God as the rock or his rock. So this was a theme that kept reoccurring in his life, which I think is very freeing because, you know, even though these are biblical characters, they didn't get it all the time right away, just like us. They need to revisit and they need to reassure themselves of who God is and their position in him. There are many Psalms that he wrote that comes back to this realization. So don't be surprised if you have revisited this thought before and now you're back in it, revisiting it, examining yourself to see where you're at. So what is it going to take, ladies, for you and I to come to the truth and the conclusion that he only is your rock? What are you going to have to go through in order for that to be the reality by which everything follows through. What is it right now in your life that you are dealing with that is challenging this concept of him alone being your rock? This is where you need to start thinking. So I want to ask you, though, how big is your rock? That's kind of the, the, the first kind of focal point. How big is your rock today? What are the parameters and limits that you have set upon your rock? How much have you been trusting in your rock up to date? And this is where you and I can look at that and see, okay, I, I know I haven't done it flawlessly. I know I haven't been. I know I take back the reins and control. I know that I do this. But right now, ladies, we forget what's behind and we press on ahead. We get do-overs all the time. We get to mess up and then we get to do over. And he so lovingly and gladly welcomes you into that place of let's, let's get back to the basics. I'm talking about the realization that this is who God intended for you to experience him as, the rock. You see, what God did in history past is he set out to reveal himself to mankind. They didn't know him. So he needs to show up in situations in their life and reveal who he is. So the very first time that this name of God is shown to us is in Deuteronomy. And this is what it says of him. This is the first time that it is used of him that the name rock is ascribed to God. And it's very sweet. It says this, for I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice. Righteousness and upright is he. Now Moses wrote this at a time in his life where he was passing on the nation of Israel to Joshua. And where he knew that I need them to know that God is the rock. They're going to have to experience it, but I need them to know that this is who God intends for them to understand about him. So when Moses writes this, he's passing on that legacy. Don't you realize how key this is? 
for you and I to talk about God as our rock. You know, what, you know what's going on in your life? I'm clinging to my rock. Well, how, how are things going in, in your situation? I have a rock that I'm holding on to. When we start talking like this to one another, we remind each other and we pass on that legacy of who he is. And they needed to know that this is who God intended for them to experience. Describing our God in this way puts weight to him. Have you ever, I don't know if anybody of you are into rocks or, or gems or whatever, but, but the weight of a rock is very important. The weight of it describes the substance that it's made of. Um, we were in a country, and, and along the shoreline were all these beautiful rocks, and they just kept rolling in. I thought, wow, these rocks are they're, they're so light. They, they just kind of keep rolling in and rolling out. And you pick them up, and it's pumice rock, pumice stone. And I had no idea that pumice stone is the um, hardened foam of lava, which is so light and so brittle and so crumbly, but you pick it up and, and you think it should have the weight of a stone, but it doesn't because the essence is just powder, just hardened powder. Well, have you ever picked up a stone that has iron ore in it? You know, where they crush the rock and they melt it down and out comes iron ore that we create into steel? Well, it doesn't take very much for you to, to find a rock that you can barely move without straining your muscles because the weight is so um, dense in it. So my question to you is what weight does God carry within you being your rock today? Where, where are you struggling with the, the density of the power of God being able to work in your life and through your life? I don't know where that is, but you do. So let's remember, God is setting out in history past to reveal himself that he is the rock. If you have not experienced him... As the rock, he will set out in your life for you to have an experience that will reveal to you the weight of his power in your life at any given time. This is important to him. It's important for him that you experience him as your rock because otherwise there's a gap in your understanding of who God is. So you take this attribute or character quality or, or name of God, and you say, okay, God, whatever it's going to take for me to experience you as my rock, I'm okay with. That could be very challenging. You might have already been there and didn't understand what that was all about. But now, after tonight, you will know that the point of some of these things that you've gone through is to have the experience and the knowledge and understanding that God is my rock. I can hold on to him. What a perfect arrangement that in history past, there was a need and God shows up and says, I'm going to handle this. Can you trust me? Has he changed today? No, he's the same. We have a need. He shows up and he says, I can handle it. I can do this. And it shouldn't surprise us because this is what he does best is in this constant change of our life. Think about God as your rock, unchanging, that you get to hold on to for dear life. And the Bible is full of people who had this experience. So you get to have your own experience of knowing that he alone and he only is your rock. I love that about it. But, you know, on the other hand, what's it going to take? What has it taken in your life for you to experience that? You might have an amazing testimony. Share that testimony over and over. Relive it with the people that you love and that you know. See, God has this, this normalcy that he wants us to understand about him. See, we, normal for us 
is really just kind of messy and complicated. You know, life has this, this way of just kind of happening around us. But God has normal, simple, uncomplicated way of showing up on the scene of our lives and saying, trust me, I can handle this. If you look to me and if you see me as your rock, I'm going to guide you. I'm going to help you navigate through this. I'm going to direct your course. I'm going to defend you and your position in me because you belong to me. He loves you so much. He loves you so much that he will allow some difficult circumstances for you to know that you know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt that he alone and he only is your rock. That is scary. But it's such a God thing. And when you gave your life over to him, when you signed over your rights to his life, he gets to do this in your life. Don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. Don't be perplexed. Don't be annoyed. This is what he does. He reveals himself to you so that he can be all that he intended for you to know about him. And I was the biggest fool of them all for not letting him handle things. No, 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 I, I got this one. You know, I'm sure, you know, um, I, I, no, I don't got it, you know, I don't got it. Now, God, would you help me pick up the pieces? You see, and, and God says, I wish you would have just let me from the beginning hold on to you and you could hold on to me. But what I didn't quite understand, and this is what I want to offer to you, what I didn't quite understand is that that was the setup. It was designed that way. And in his grace and mercy that I wouldn't mess things up so much, he set out to find me out in those situations and be my rock. See, I always thought, God, why can't you just give me what I need? Why can't you just give me what I need so that I can do life? Why can't you just, you know, give all the stuff that I need to manage better? Why can't you just um, give those things that I can um, cope with things better? You know, better coping skills. God, give me better coping skills. I got the, I got the idea. I need better coping skills. And then, and then could you make me less emotional? so that I don't have to be all over the map, emotional, just give me the, give me the right emotions. You see, and, and I just kept thinking that I wanted him to make me better. I just wanted him to make me better so that I could maybe do great things for him or, or more things for him. And what he set up as the design was that I would become dependent upon him, that I would come into a relationship that was so reliant upon him that it wasn't about me being better at all. It was me being more available for him to do great things through me. And do you know that that took a long struggle? And I think that's just because I'm so stubborn. I know none of you are stubborn like that, but that's me. That was me. Just make me better. Just make me better at handling things. And he said, I want you to be better at looking to me so I can handle those things better than you could. That was his intention all along to come to this conclusion. And this is a conclusion that you and I can all come to. It's from Psalm 18. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And verse 31, it says, For who is God except the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? Have you experienced that? If you haven't, if, this, if I am so far removed from your situation, if you have not experienced that, you need to know that is his intention. He wants you to know him fully and completely. So let's come a little bit closer. What is it right now that you might have forgotten about your Savior? 
that is kind of shaking the bedrock of your life, that has kind of caused the edges to crumble a little bit. You might have been in a situation where, where doubt has crept in or, or, you know, why isn't God doing something? See, I want you to come even closer. Let's look at Jesus now. Let's step onto the pages and make it personal. Jesus came onto the scene and he said, I am the rock. And you build your life upon me. And there's going to be storms in life. But if you trust me and trust in me, then we can do this together. I have a three-year-old granddaughter, three and a half. And this is our favorite song. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down and the floods go up. And the house on the rock stands firm. When you and I recognize that the stone that the builders rejected, it says about him in Romans 8, and the capstone, the cornerstone, when that becomes your solid rock, your go-to, your defense, your position being in the rock, then you have a life in Christ that others can look to and be encouraged by. They can look to you and they say, she's got something figured out. She's doing something. And they'll ask you, what are you doing? Why are you able to handle life? And you have the perfect example because God is my rock. And there is no other rock besides him. See, Jesus referred to himself about this. He says, and we say about him that he is the rock of my salvation you get to choose in these situations of life to either crumble, and the storms of life come, and they, you either crumble under them, you get washed up on shore, and you pick up the pieces and you walk on, or you get to walk through them in the power and the strength of the Lord, and he sets you on that course to experience him through it, that stable security and safety through it all. And you say, hmm, what do I want to choose? Do I want to crumble or do I want to walk through through safety and security? These are, these are really kind of what it's all about, ladies. Nobody is forcing you in the Christian life to choose anything. You see, he's made it simple for you to understand his principles, but then you have to choose to walk in them. This is a foundational principle. Is he my rock today or is he not? Is he going to be my rock in the future, or am I going to be self-reliant? See, if you've ever needed that mental picture, that mental picture in your mind that is this so big that um, it will solve those blazing hot relational problems, it'll give you cover for those storms, and it'll be that thing that you cling to. This is the object in our heart and mind that has the name of Jesus written all over it. And I don't know what mental picture you need, if it, if it needs to be a little rock or, or whatever, or je just Jesus being the rock or Jesus praying at the rock or just something, but you need to make some kind of mental connection with this picture of God because it'll be the very thing that becomes the stability that you're gonna need for the next trial that is to come in your life. He's personal, and he wants personal in this, ladies. He gets personal, and a lot of times we run away because we don't want it. We're, we're, too, we're too busy dealing with it, and then we, we, we lose sight of what he intended with it. I know I'm not the only one in the room that has done this. I know because you're a woman, we think we can fix it. We think we can control it. We think we can make everybody around us better, and we love them, and we have a wonderful plan for their lives. And, and how is that working for you? And I just go, why don't we ever learn? Why don't we ever stop this insanity and start trusting in the safety and the security of our rock? I don't know if you've been in a storm. Um, I haven't been in a storm on um, an ocean or anything like that, but I have 
when we lived in Germany for seven years as missionaries doing um, Bible college, I was coming home from visiting my parents in Sweden, and um, the flight was delayed many, many hours because of snow and ice and the whole thing. So I finally get to the airport in Germany, a little small airport out in like nowheresville, and the shuttle drops me off. My car was there, and you know snow, you know how it packs up on a car, and it's like a foot and a half high. And you realize, how am I ever going to get in? And how am I ever going to drive in this? This was probably about 2 in the morning. And I was supposed to have come in at like 10 or something like that. And I have to, you know, fight my way through the snow to get to my car. And then I have to stand in the snow and get all the snow off and off the windshield. And hopefully my car will start. Well, the whole thing was is that no roads were plowed. Not one single road was plowed at that time in the morning. So there I am in my car, you know, white knuckling it, nose to the windshield, looking out, and all I can see is white. You can't see the road, you can't see the ditches, you can't see anything else around. And I'm just holding on for dear life, and I'm just thinking, Lord, just get me through this, just get me through this. And then you know how those overwhelming feelings come, and you, you start crying, and you feel alone, and you feel it's like, why am I here, and what's going to happen to me, and I'm going to end up in a ditch, and no one's going to see me for days, and I don't know what I'm going to do, and I'm going to starve to death, and, and then all of a sudden, I'm just there, and, I, and then for some odd reason, my, my hand, without me even realizing what I was doing, I just click on the CD, and it's like, and here comes this song, and I'm like, where? I didn't even know I had that on my CD. That song let not your heart be troubled, his tender word I hear. And resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Now the tears are coming. Through the path he leadeth one step, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he's watching me. And I kept pressing repeat, repeat, repeat of that song because I'm like, you're watching me. I, I know I'm a little bit bigger than a sparrow, but God, just get me home, get me home, get me home. See, what you don't realize about me is I have one fear, and that is that I'm going to freeze to death. I know, right? Crazy, silly. That is just that I would become so cold and die freezing. See, now the story is a little different for you, right? I mean, that's what was in my mind. This is my moment. I am going to freeze to death. What I feared has come upon me. I'm going to freeze to death. Well, obviously I didn't. But when that song was playing, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that he was truly watching me. That he saw me to the open road that was plowed because that was the Audubon. But I had a half hour that took me an hour and a half to get through. But he saw me and he was watching out for me. And I know that death is not a worry for me. Dying, maybe. You know, throw me in an ocean and I'll tread water for days. I might be eaten by a shark first, but, but I can do water. But this, this was my, this was my thing. Was I going to trust God when my greatest fear was about to be realized? So let me ask you another question, ladies. Is your rock trustworthy? Have you discovered that he is trustworthy? That he has demonstrated to you? Well, the, sim the simple answer is yes. The more complicated is, have you had an experience and an opportunity to, to demonstrate and declare that your rock is trustworthy? See, you will find yourself in this volatile, unstable, unpredictable situation, and God shows up, and he'll say, trust me, simply trust me. Has he done that yet for you? Have you been in that place? How did you do? You see, that's when you experientially will know the weight of your rock. When you get to know his care for you, when you get to know his loving arms around you and trusting him, is the best place for you to be. Ladies, it's only in Jesus that we can be in pain and praise at the same time. See, only when our rock will keep us steady, when life rages and changes. See, if he wanted to, this is what, this is what boggles my mind, if he wanted to, he could give me everything that I needed to handle it. 
So the very fact that he doesn't do that, smart women say, ah, he's got a different plan. So I'm repeating myself. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Are you understanding that he wants you to know him as your rock? Does this make sense to you? Can you put some of those pieces together in your life and connect some of those dots? You see, Jesus being the rock of ages that you hold on to because he can hold on to you. See, it doesn't help for you just to hang out around the rock. That doesn't work. You hang on to the rock and you sense the weight of God's power and presence in your life. Then you get to be the psalmist then you get to say these kinds of things about your God. This could be you. This could be me writing this. Oh, Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be put to shame. Rescue me, for you always do what is right. Bend down and listen to me. Rescue me quickly. Be for me a great rock of safety, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. You are my rock and my fortress. For the honor of your name, lead me out of this peril. Pull me from the trap of my enemies for I find protection in you alone. This could be you writing like the Psalms. That was from Psalm 31. This is relationship, ladies. He wants this relationship with you on the personal level. He doesn't want you just to know about it from other people. He doesn't want you just to hear about it. He wants you to understand that this is him offering this kind of closeness in relationship. This is one foundation laid for you for all the other relationships to build upon. When you have this relationship clear in your mind what it's supposed to be, then these relationships take care of themselves because it has a foundation built upon God. He is our salvation. Don't you love that? Don't you love that he has made it very simple? We don't have to be rocket scientists and we don't have to go through schooling to know what he's offering us. Keeping close to him is going to be the key because he is the rock. Because he is the rock, you get to experience him as the rock. Because he is that kind of God that says, I will want you to have a testimony that demonstrates that I am the rock. So I'm going to give you a little warning is that there might be a situation on the horizon because if you are not sure you've experienced him as your rock, it behooves him to give you a situation where you have to experience that. Otherwise, you don't have that testimony. He can defend you. He can deflect danger. He can warn you. He can whisper to you in that still small voice that you're going to be okay. If you're far from the rock, that doesn't happen You have to be on the rock. You build on that rock, that sure foundation. Well, that rock inside you has a conduit, and it's the Holy Spirit. See, what the Holy Spirit does for you and I, he gives us that daily assurance of God's personal care. He reminds you, because you need reminding, because you forget. I forget. We need reminding that his personal daily assurance of personal daily care is there for each and every one of us. Are you, are you getting this? Do you understand? Good. Because this is important. Because you think it's your personal daily care of yourself and everybody around you that's going to make it. And it's not. It is not. That's not the way you were designed. You might be tired, exhausted, worn out, um, frustrated, and, and you can't figure it out. And I'm just going to say to you, in the sweetest way possible, you need to give back control to him. You need to stop calling the shots. And you need to give him the reins. Let him be God because he does that so good. And then enjoy it. Is there another rock in your life, ladies? Because you might be saying, yeah, God is my rock and all these other things that you're trusting in. He alone is. He only wants to be your rock. You might have fears today. You might be listening to lies. Um, You might be concerned about your future or concerned about your present, whatever situation you are in. 
You might be doubting that God really cares about your situation. He cares about everybody else. Seems like God's working and busy with everybody else, but not me. I'm still in this situation and nothing is changing. And what am I going to do? Maybe, maybe I'm not so special after all. You know, you are. You are so special to God. You're not a special case, <laughs> but you're special to God because he brought you here to reassure you of your position in him. When your life is given over and yielded to him, he does it so much better. I want to give you a word of hope tonight because what happens with us women, you know what we do? Because and my lipstick's all crumbling up is that um, now for some reason there's this guilt. And you can kind of sense it like, oh, man, I've blown it again. I'm a failure. I've done this. And, I, you know, and everybody else around me probably did it really right. And, you know, I'm the only one who failed in this area. Now the speaker is telling me, you know, you know he's got to be my rock, and, I, and I've blown it. Well, let me tell you this. And this is your hope verse in 2 Timothy 2.13. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. You see, he's going to keep coming after you in the sweetest way so that you will know that your experience in him is true and right and good. I want to give you, in closing, a simple way for you to remember your rock. R stands for, because he is your rock, he reassures your position. He reassures you of your position to him, and that is security. That's the R. Reassures your position. O, he overcomes all obstacles. That is promised. When you do it his way, he will overcome the obstacles and give you the freedom in him. The C is he combats the lies about you. That's defense. He is your rock-solid defense. The K is he keeps you fortified. That's the stability. Is he the one who reassures you, overcomes, combats, and keeps you fortified? Then he is your rock. Then you can rest assured that he can handle everything that's coming your way. If not, now you get to turn and you get to look into his face and say, God, I give you back control. Because I want you to be my rock-solid defense at all times. I want you alone to be my rock. I don't want to fake rocks. I don't want to pretend rocks. I don't want any shadow rocks. I don't want anything else but you to be my rock. So, ladies, tomorrow we are going to examine our hearts for any movable parts in this. And maybe there are some parts in your life that need to be anchored. And I want you to pray tonight that the Holy Spirit will prepare your heart to be ready for his skilled hands, the surgeon's hand, to come and do some open heart surgery. This was just your pre-op appointment. <laughs> Tomorrow you're scheduled for surgery. And so for that, you need to be read up and prayed up. And I want you to write down, you're going to be reading tomorrow morning, Psalm 143, verses 8 through 12, to prepare you for, for operation. Let me pray for you. Because I know there are things that he wants to do in you. And during our prayer time tonight, there will be women ready to pray for you to help you turn back control and give him back the reins. And just realize, I'm not, I, it's not happening. I'm, I'm not doing it. I want to do it God's way again. Let me pray for you. Holy Spirit, I know that you've been speaking to women. I see it all over their faces. And I see that you are stirring up within so many of us um, the realization that um, maybe there is a lack in my trust of you. So God, we, we remove all shame. We remove all guilt. We remove all shortcomings and all failures. And we just say, take us back to that place where we first believed, where we first recognized how great and how mighty you are, how powerful and how strong you are. And let me do a do-over. Let me recommit my life to you so that you can continue the work that you've begun in me. 
that you can continue to write and author new chapters in my life. Lord, I am so aware of my own failures and shortcomings. And I can stand before these ladies, my sisters, and I can say, God, I'm so grateful that you have accepted me, that you have taken me on and you're not going to let go, that you are shaping my life into what you intend for it to be, that you planned. And Lord, my sisters in front of me, as sweet and as beautiful and as dear as they look to me as I see their faces, I know that you have examined them tonight and you've exposed their heart to them by your Holy Spirit. So we want to come um, ready and available later on tonight to do some business with you. So God, um, don't let this moment pass where we would understand what you are requiring of us. Let us hold on to it. And when we have planned for, for time and, and prayer, would you get us up out of our seats and move us to that place of prayer? Would you um, convict us of any unbelief that we have had and been coddling and excusing? Lord, would you do what only you can do through your word, and that is to change us in this ever-changing world? So, Lord, we give you this night. We give you this retreat all over again. And as we have come to your word, we know that your word will not return void. So you will do a greater and deeper work in each of our lives through your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done here tonight. See, ladies, the Lord is near. He is near to those who have a broken heart. And he saves such that has a remorseful and a regretful spirit. He loves you. There is no place that he would rather you be than right here, right now, to reassure you that he has always wanted to be your rock. He has always intended to be your rock. And now you get to figure out how that's going to work in your life. Now, you all agreed earlier that you are going to do your part. I've done my part for tonight. And I will be available later for prayer to pray with any of you that are ready once again to come back to him and relinquish to him your life. God bless you.